How frequently has melancholy and even misanthropy taken possession of me, when the world has disgusted me, and friends have proven unkind. I have then considered myself as a particle broken off from the grand mass of mankind. My dreams were all my own, I accounted for them to nobody, they were my refuge when annoyed, my dearest pleasure when free. Independence I have long considered as the grand blessing of life, the basis of every virtue, and independence I will ever secure by contracting my wants, though I were to live on a barren heath. It appears to me impossible that I should cease to exist, or that this active, restless spirit, equally alive to joy and sorrow, should only be organized dust, ready to fly abroad the moment the spring snaps, or the spark goes out, which kept it together. Surely something resides in this heart that is not perishable, and life is more than a dream. My own sex, I hope, will excuse me, if I treat them like rational creatures, instead of flattering their fascinating graces, and viewing them as if they were in a state of perpetual childhood, unable to stand alone. Taught from their infancy that beauty is woman's scepter, the mind shapes itself to the body, and roaming round its gilt cage, only seeks to adorn its prison. I do not wish them women to have power over men, but over themselves. If we revert to history, we shall find that the women who have distinguished themselves have neither been the most beautiful nor the most gentle of their sex. Surely something resides in this heart that is not perishable, and life is more than a dream. I love man as my fellow, but his scepter, real, or usurped, extends not to me, unless the reason of an individual demands my homage, and even then the submission is to reason, and not to man. Friendship is a serious affection, the most sublime of all affections, because it is founded on principle, and cemented by time. Strengthen the female mind by enlarging it, and there will be an end to blind obedience. Simplicity and sincerity generally go hand in hand, as both proceed from a love of truth. No man chooses evil because it is evil, he just mistakes it for happiness, the good he seeks. It is vain to expect virtue from women till they are in some degree independent of men. Men endeavor to sink us still lower, merely to render us alluring objects for a moment, and women, intoxicated by the adoration which men, under the influence of their senses, pay them, do not seek to obtain a durable interest in their hearts or to become the friends of the fellow creatures who find amusement in their society. Weakness may excite tenderness, and gratify the arrogant pride of man, but the lordly caresses of a protector will not gratify a noble mind that pants for, and deserves to be respected. Fondness is a poor substitute for friendship.